This video contains major spoilers. Let's go. Hi! Hi, everybody. It's been a while since I've done a... a discussion video. Mostly because I got a new job, and I can't play video games at work anymore. So I've been playing a lot less video games, and I've had a lot less free time. Uh, so I haven't really been in the mood to make videos like this lately. But, I did just get home from watching Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the feature film, the movie, the the cinematic piece of art that was released in theaters a couple of weeks ago. I'm weird. I, I don't I don't like to watch movies the day of because I don't want to be in a crowded theater. I'd like to be in an empty theater. And uh, yeah, the theater was mostly empty. That's a side thing. Whatever. So, um, Sonic the movie won. I saw it around when it came out. It may have been opening weekend. I don't remember. I don't think it was. Um, but I did, despite, like, I, I knew what I was getting into with the movie. I knew I was not going to get a full-fledged Sonic Universe film. I was going to get a Sonic goes to the real world and has wacky misadventures film. And when I went into that, expecting that, uh, I left relatively satisfied. I, I had a lot of fun. I thought Sonic was characterized really well. I think that Ben Schwartz is a fantastic Sonic. I honestly... <clears throat> the, it's between him and Roger Craig Smith in terms of, like, their per strictly their performance as Sonic the Hedgehog, but Ben Schwartz may be the best Sonic we've ever had. I love hearing him talk as Sonic. It feels so natural. I don't think of the voice. I, I just see it as Sonic, and that's awesome. All of that said, even though I did enjoy it for what it is, what it was was still a very Hollywoodified movie um, that felt very safe. Safe. That that's the word I'm thinking of. It was super safe. And would it be would it have been nicer to have like a full fledged movie that takes place in the Sonic the Hedgehog universe, and not ours? Yeah. But again, for what it is, I enjoyed it, and I I I actually feel like I enjoy it more in hindsight. Like I liked it coming out of the theater, but I have a lot of fond memories of watching it. That may have to do with the fact that it came out right before the pandemic kicked in. But regardless, like even even with and now as the as things have have been opening up, whether they should be or not, like as things kind of return to a state of normalcy, I still look back on Sonic One, and I'm like, that was a fun movie. I had fun. Did I have fun with Sonic Two? Yes, I I I, I would say I did. Um, it has a lot of problems, it has a lot of similar problems, it has a lot of different problems, but it also has a lot of new strengths that the first movie did not have. And I'm gonna freaking talk about them now. So it takes place shortly, I suppose, after the first movie. Sonic has been, you know, discovered by society, he's trying to be a superhero, and, uh, Tom? I actually do not remember the human characters' names, like, any of them. Uh, I'm gonna I'll get into that later, but Human McMahon uh, is trying to like kind of baby Sonic because he is still a kid. He's like a teenager at best, at, at like oldest, but he definitely acts like a youngin, and he doesn't quite understand like responsibility and stuff yet. And it gets really schmaltzy, and eh, whatever. Um, but Robotnik, Doctor Eggman, Jim Carrey finds his way off of the mushroom planet that he found himself in at the end of the last movie, and he brought a friend. He somehow, I don't know how this worked entirely, he used a ring to summon Knuckles, and they are they were working together to find the Master Emerald so that Knuckles can restore peace to his mind, because he's the last Echidna. And one, like, plot point that, that's been, that was mentioned a few times, the, in Sonic's world, the Echidnas and the Owls are sworn enemies. The Owls, an example being Sonic's mother figure, Longclaw, which, for the record, fucking awesome. If you watch my Persona streams, I've mentioned a couple times, or, like, just general videos on the channel, I've mentioned a couple times that I thought Longclaw was awesome and that it was a serious missed opportunity that she died in the first few minutes of the first movie. You know, it's, it's another one of those things that makes me wish, hey, I really wish this movie took place on this planet. I kind of wanted to see the conflict between the Echidnas and the Owls. But no, it's got to take place in, uh, fucking Idaho. Or Iowa? Green Hills is a town in some actual U.S. state, or whatever. Where was I? Legi I legitimately have lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, 
Um, anyway, the owls and uh, the owls have apparently wiped out like most, if not all, echidnas, and Knuckles believes himself to be the last one. Uh, and the owls apparently stole the Master Emerald like a long time ago. And Earth is where it is being hidden. So Eggman and Knuckles are working together to get the Master Emerald. Eggman obviously wants it for power. Knuckles wants it for personal reasons. And you know how that'll go. Also, Tails comes in. He's from a planet. I don't think they ever explain his home planet. Uh, he, he, you know, you saw him at the end, the post credits in the original movie. He appears through a ring to look for Sonic. Sonic is apparently a well-known hero where he's from. Uh, and he found Sonic because the Sonic boom that he made playing baseball in the first one, like it was sense, it, it was sensed throughout the galaxy and Tails found it. And it was like, holy shit, I need to go find this Sonic guy. I, I don't I don't entirely understand that, and frankly, I don't I, I, I don't really care either. <laughs> so Tails and Sonic team up. They know Knuckles and Eggman's plan, and they have to find the Master Emeralds before they do to stop any evil nonsense. And here I, I'm kind of discussing the the best part of the movie, and that is you, you'll never believe it. The best part of the Sonic movie is the Sonic shit in it. <laughs> A lot of this stuff was a ton of fun to watch. I loved seeing Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Robotnik uh, interacting with each other. I thought all of their characterizations were great. I thought they all felt very faithful to the source material and kind of maybe exceeded it a bit. Like they know, like Knuckles especially didn't feel. I want to get more into like how much I like each of them in a minute. Knuckles himself didn't feel like a direct rip from like the how knuckles acts in the games or in like sonic x or if that even <laughs> if that's even something anyone thinks about knuckles is a proud warrior type and not just like the the jock dumbass <laughs> that he uh that he is in in kind of the games he's not just kind of like a himbo guy i mean he is technically by the definition of a himbo but yeah uh, he's he's got a lot of warrior pride and that's great Anyway, the, the characterizations themselves. Sonic is still Sonic from the first movie. He, uh, uh, ben Schwartz does an awesome job still. I think he he is Sonic. He nails the role. Uh, and the writing I, I thought was decently charming when it wasn't super pandery, which this movie is. I keep saying this, but I'll get to that. I've got different points uh, that I'll be getting to throughout this uh, discussion. Tails, I thought, was a little weak. Um, his general, like chipper inventorness to him was good I, I kind of liked how like he has this it's like his catchphrase that only Sonic the Hedgehog could do A so only Sonic the Hedgehog could do B or C or D um, he, do, he says that like three or four times throughout the movie I thought it was cute but also it kind of drove home like what reputation does Sonic have throughout the, the galaxy I don't I, that never felt entirely fleshed out to me Maybe they didn't have time to flesh it out. Um, but Tails kind of felt a little flat at times. Uh, as much, uh, though I I can't hate it too much because it's still he still acts like Tails, and he's still you know this sweet little boy, and I I, I liked him being on screen. But I I think the problem with Tails is that it's not his fault that Knuckles is awesome. <laughs> it's not his fault that Knuckles stole the show and was consistently fucking awesome throughout the entire movie. He is really cool. You know, Knuckles is an incredibly strong guy who has these these who does these crazy feats of strength throughout the film. And on top of that, he is so funny. Knuckles is such a, an entertaining character to experience in this movie. Like, and his humor is so toned down. I wouldn't call it deadpan, because he speaks with a lot of oompa and charisma. Like, he's mostly angry throughout it. But when he... <laughs> when he's funny, he's fucking funny. Like, there... Uh, one, one point early in the movie, like, Knuckles is, um... You know, he, Sonic got away, and Knuckles is lamenting that, and then he's surrounded by Eggman's robots. And he, he was, like, about to fucking throw hands uh, until he realized that they were uh, trying to help him up the cliff so that he could talk to Dr. Eggman. And he was just like, oh, I understand. There are stairs. 
And then he just walks up it. I thought that was really funny. Um, and later in the movie, th um, this is like closer to the end, as well as a f like the literal ending of the movie, as well as a few parts peppered in. I don't care how many times the I, I am from a different society that is completely naive to the ways of modern life and I'm confused about it, and I'm going to say wrong things, and I'm going to going to call baseball, base the ball, and I'm going to be confused at the aspect of fun. I don't care how many times that exact same character is thrown at me. I'm going to laugh at that every time, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> it's fucking funny, okay? We all have that one trope that's like the exact same in every piece of media, and you laugh at it every time. For me, that's that. And Knuckles being that was funny. All of that kind of just is enhanced by the excellent performance of Idris Elba. That's his name, right? Yep, that's his name. Here's the thing, I don't watch movies. <laughs> So if I'm trying to, that's just a little warning here, 15 minutes in. If you hear me critiquing anything about this film being a film, do understand that this is coming from the, uh, from the perspective of an idiot who never watches movies and is absolutely not a movie guy. This, this year, I'm going hog wild. It's only April and I've already seen three movies in theaters. That is a lot for me. That usually I don't exceed one movie a year. This year I've seen Jackass Forever, I've seen The Batman, and I've seen Sonic 2. So I'm going crazy here. I did... Uh, I don't. I forget if this is the point I made. I didn't know who Idris Elba was before uh, he was announced to be Knuckles. I I knew that everyone was going fucking crazy for him. Like everyone was like, "Holy shit, Idris Elba is Knuckles! This is the greatest thing I've ever heard!" And I'm like, "I'm sure it is. I don't know who this guy is." <laughs> and then uh, I heard Knuckles talk in the first trailer for the first in like the first trailer knuckles was in and i was like oh i get it because this is actually perfect uh and he does incredibly i don't know if he is like known as a voice actor but i i feel like there is always a like i i do not trust me i am completely out out of the loop in terms of what idris elba does maybe he's done a ton of voice roles and is like a super well-known like cartoon voice actor i don't know and i'm i'm too lazy to look it up right now um, but I can typically tell when a Hollywood actor versus a voice actor does a voice role because they act very differently. Colleen O'Shaughnessy um, reprises her role as Tails. She is the voice actress for Tails in the games ever since Sonic Colors. And that's that, that in itself is great. More work for voice actors, please. And again, Ben Schwartz is, I've, I've praised him a lot. I actually don't know if what he's been in. I, again, I don't know if he's primarily a voice actor. And even he's still, like, my point is, the, you could tell when there is a voice actor voicing a character and when there is a standard Hollywood actor voicing a character because acting on screen and voice acting are very different, especially when you're dealing with a Japanese property. Like, anime voice acting sounds very different from an American acting on in front of a camera. They just sound different. There's nothing wrong with either, obviously. I'm not going to sit here and say, fuck acting. Acting is stupid. But they sound different. Kyle, uh, uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy sounds like a voice actress. Ben Schwartz sounds a little bit more like a Hollywood actor. I, he might be. I don't know. Um, Idris Elba sounds like a voice actor. He sounds like he is voicing a cartoon character. And I, I think that is a positive because he is Knuckles is a cartoon character. He's not Joe Schmo down the street. He's a fucking cartoon echidna, and he should have a sense of cartoonishness to his voice. And he does. And I think Idris Elba does amazingly about uh, with that. I, I've spent a lot of time talking about Knuckles because I, I truly think he's the best part of the movie. The second best part is, as always, as, as with the first one, Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. Fucking mwah. Jim Carrey, I feel like there's there's a divide um, between uh, like who likes Jim Carrey and who doesn't because he has a shtick and that shtick is very similar throughout all of his movies um, and that shtick is not for everyone. But here's the thing. I'd, I love people who can act like a cartoon in real life. You know what show I remember very fondly as a child? Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. You know why I remember it so fondly and why I liked it a lot? It's a live-action cartoon. Wacky things happen. 
logic doesn't always apply. Like, characters are fucking stupid in a way that a cartoon character would be stupid. Like, they, they have cardboard cutouts replacing the kids in class when they need to go do shenanigans away from their teachers and it just works and people get flattened when they're trampled by a bunch of kids. That's funny. That's great. I it because it is so much more difficult to apply cartoon logic to real life than it is to apply real logic to cartoons. And Jim Carrey pulls off the human cartoon character thing so well. He is the human cartoon character. Like when you think of a, a guy who acts like a cartoon character in real life, like you got Jim Carrey. Like he's the first person you think of. And again, much like Knuckles, Dr. Robotnik, Dr. Eggman is a cartoon character. He is played by a real person in this film, but Dr. Robotnik is a cartoon character, a video game character. He is a character of drawn and generated media. You know what I mean? Like, it, not necessarily cartoons, but, you know, video games that are generated by artists. And Jim Carrey takes that all the way. I think he is, I thought in the first movie, he is a great uh, interpretation of Dr. Robotnik, who I always think is much stronger as a foil villain than a serious villain, even though, you know, his his um, portrayal in Sonic Sat AM was really intimidating and cool. Um... It, it, ever since, like, Sonic's jump to 3D, I think Eggman is way more entertaining when he's trying to be funny, like in the more recent games and in Sonic Boom, rather than when he's trying to be really dastardly, like in, like, s fucking, like, any serious Sonic game. So, Jim Carrey is hilarious, and I love the fact that he's there, and I love the fact that he looks more like Eggman this time. I thought that his design in... Weird, weirdly hypocritically, actually. I thought that his design in the first movie was fine because he's not being played by a cartoon. Uh, he is an actual human being, so it wouldn't make sense for him to look all wacky. And I do stand by that, because now he went insane on a mushroom planet for as long as he did. Uh, so he's he, he's obviously going to like lose his mind a little bit, and he, and he looks like he did. Plus, like, the mustache, the baldness, the goggles, as well as that fucking slick coat he had. It looks good. It's a good-looking Eggman. So I focused on the Sonic parts a lot. What about the people? The humans are obviously going to be a big part of this movie, uh, as they were in the first one. And they are not as big a part uh, as they were in the first movie. I knew they were going to still be here. That said, uh, I, I, like I said at the beginning, I went into the first movie expecting it to be pretty human-focused, because Sonic and Eggman, Eggman being a human, of course, were the only Sonic characters that, that were really there. This one had more Sonic characters, so I went in being like, I want to see more Sonic characters. And I would say they take up 60 to 70% of the screen time, and that extra 40 to 35% that are humans, made, like, the, the increase in Sonic just made the humans much worse. They're, like, when the humans were on screen in this movie, I, I I was just like, all right, get back. To, all right, I get it. We got to move the human plot along. Let's get back to Sonic now. Uh, and then later, it just got to the point where I actively loathed when the humans were on screen. So I haven't discussed this. The side plot of the movie. Um, Sonic is alone at, in, at home because Tom and his wife, whose name I do not remember, uh, are going to Hawaii for Tom's sister-in-law's his name better be Tom. Like, it may not be Tom. Anyway, he's going to Hawaii for his sister-in-law's wedding. Uh, his sister-in-law was the character nobody liked from the first one that really did not like Tom for some reason. I never quite understood that. I mean, later it's like, okay, he let this rat man into his house. <laughs> and he's trying, and the giant of the cars mayhem throughout, the, throughout town. But before that, they had such a problem, even though Tom seemed like a really nice guy. I mean, A-cab, I guess, but... Not that, that was never directly implied. So, um, but they're trying to, essentially the whole thing is like, I'm, I don't, uh, <laughs> don't ruin my wedding, Tom. Uh, and then it was like, oh, they're gonna ruin the wedding, yeah. Um, and then, in the, about the middle act of the movie, uh, Sonic is being chased by an avalanche, and, uh, Tom has to use a ring, a teleportation ring, to save, uh, Sonic from being crushed by the avalanche. Uh, and so, uh, Sonic gets teleported with all the snow, 
And then it turns out the whole wedding was a setup by the government to capture Sonic. That doesn't entirely make sense. How'd they know Sonic was going to be there? <laughs> but whatever. Um, that's not my main problem. My main problem is then there's this, like, long scene that focuses on the wife and her sister. Like, trying to be espionage -y. They're not funny. I don't like these... I don't care about these characters, and they spend so long on them. And it feels like this scene takes absolutely ages to get over with. C CJ and I watched this movie together. CJ said that the part probably wasn't as long as I felt it was. Because CJ didn't like that part either, but they didn't care so much for the length of it. They just didn't like it. I, for me, it felt like an hour. <laughs> like, maybe not an hour. It felt like 15, 20 minutes was spent on this. Than this entire scene um, with the post-wedding shenanigans, and I I, it, it, I I was losing my mind. I was like, "Get back to Sonic! Get back to Eggman! Eggman and Knuckles are on their way to the Master Emerald, and the world is gonna end. What are we doing here?" I fucking hated that part. It's ser like uh, the first movie. the The expectation of human shenanigans made made me temper my expectations. Um, and I guess I knew, it's not like I didn't think they were going to be in this movie, too. But the increased focus on Sonic just made the human parts all that much worse. And made me think, God, why doesn't this take place in Sonic's world? <laughs> in, in Longclaw's world? I don't care about these humans. Why are you so afraid to make a Sonic movie? That's just Sonic stuff. And, you know, I, I felt the same, people are, you know, some people are going to say, Oh, but humans have always been a part of Sonic games, so it's not like this is out of place. And you're right, it's not out of place to have humans in a Sonic game, or a Sonic movie. I've had this problem with the games, too. Sonic has such a fucking awesome art style, but Sega, or, or Sonic Team, are, like, afraid to go all in on it? For some reason? <laughs> that That's a totally different discussion. But... Like, just make it, just make everything Sonic. Like, <laughs> everything looks like Sonic stuff. Sonic stuff looks cool. Sonic has a really good art style. Sonic's art style, I think, translates decently well into this movie. Obviously, it didn't at first. We all saw the, the fucking, the freakazoid that we were first presented with. But, you know, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, they look great in this movie. I, I, a whole, like, animated feature film with this style, with these kinds of furry characters, would have been great. But the humans continue to drag this shit down, and I wish they were on screen for less time. I guess that whole thing is just a part of the fact that this movie still feels safe. It's got its, you know, predictable humor that you expect to see in kids' movies of the like. It's got the shoehorned in human stuff that really shouldn't be there. It, it, it's it got the dance scene with Uptown Funk playing. It's got Dr. Robotnik flossing out of nowhere? Like, Sonic flossed in the first movie. Sure, I, I don't remember the exact context of that happening, but I believe it was some kind of celebration. Dr. Eggman just busts out into a floss in the middle of a conversation with Knuckles. That's fucking stupid. Why did you do that? Like, there is definitely a lot of groan-worthy moments in this movie that just feel like, oh, yep, this is a... This is a bit of... This is a bit focus groupy in it. This is a bit focus groupy. And... Uh, it, it, it's, it felt about the same level of safe as the first movie. It had, of course, the fan service. I don't... Not fan service, just the ex 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 expansion of characters by having Tails and Knuckles join in the party. Uh, and it definitely felt more like a Sonic movie than the last one. But they didn't go all in because they had to do the things that all kids' movies do. And that that still holds it back. Like, for what it is, I think it's about as good as it could have been. Like, for, for a Sonic movie that takes place in our human world because Sonic, from another dimension, teleports into here, then, like, this is about as good as I think it could get. And it was good. I enjoyed it. But... <sighs> the missed opportunity of not just going full force with a fantastical Sonic world, like I wish Sega would do, too, 
Like, again, this is not just a criticism of the movie. That would be very, like, inaccurate. If I was like, oh, humans, it's not a focus of Sonic, and it has been. I just wish either the film industry or Sonic team would just go full force into this cool fantasy world that Sonic could have. Okay, so, I mean, that's that's my thoughts on the Sonic movie. They're going to make a third one. I believe that's already been greenlit, and I think that was news from a few months ago. And there's going to be a series focusing on Knuckles on Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I, I'm excited to see more about that, because Knuckles and Idris Elba were fucking awesome in this movie. Uh, and, and during the post-credits, actually the mid-credits, thank God, I didn't have to sit through the whole credit sequence to see this bonus scene. Um, Shadow is going to be in the next one. Shadow comes up. He is a project. He is. It seems. It seems like they're sticking with Son with uh, Shadow's backstory. Uh, you saw a bit of him. He looks good. His eyes don't look quite right, but whatever. Shadow's gonna be in the next one. Sonic Three. If it is as good as this one, I'll be satisfied. Um, but you know that these movies could still be a lot more than they are. But for what they are, strictly for what they are. I had a good time, and they're a fun watch. So that's that. That's my discussion video for Sonic the Hedgehog Dose. Um, I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this movie, too. I would personally totally understand if you didn't. Uh, the, the focus groupy stuff and the human shit does weigh the movie down a lot for me, and I can absolutely see uh, a case where it would weigh, down, weigh it down a lot more for somebody else. Um, but I had a good time, and I, I hope you had a good time watching it too. Um, anyway, that's all for now. Uh, see you in two years for my discussion video for Sonic 3 if I feel like it. Bye, everybody!